want to do in this lecture is talk about an exercise from Dubbin and Foote that focuses in on the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of a matrix. So let's say A is an n by n matrix with entries in our field F. The characteristic polynomial is the determinant of x times i minus a. So what happens when you plug in 0 for x? Then you're getting the determinant of 0 times i, which is the 0 matrix, minus a. You get the determinant of minus a. So what is that? That's the determinant of minus a matrix is minus 1 to the n times the determinant of uh, a. Because you can think of minus a as minus the identity matrix times a. So this is minus 1 to the a times the determinant of a. But if you take a polynomial and you plug in 0, a polynomial in x, and you plug in 0, what do you get? You also get the constant term of that polynomial. So what we're seeing is by thinking about this polynomial evaluated at 0 in two different ways, we see that the constant term of the characteristic polynomial is minus 1 to the n times the determinant of the matrix A. OK, so the constant coefficient means something. We know that the x to the n coefficient is 1, that this polynomial is monic. But what about the next coefficient down? So in order to uh, make this connection, I want to recall a term that maybe I haven't used in this class yet, but you probably know from linear algebra. The trace of an n by n matrix is the sum of its diagonal entries. So the characteristic polynomial is the determinant of the matrix x times i minus a. What does x times i minus a look like? It's got x minus a11 minus a12 over minus a1n minus a21. I just want to name the entries of a, a i sub j. So looks like this. And now I want to recall a result about computing determinants that I didn't talk about in detail in 206b, but you should be familiar with. You can compute the determinant of a matrix in terms of a sum over permutations in Sn of products of matrix entries. So it's a sum over the sigma of the sine of sigma times a sigma 1 comma 1, a sigma 2 comma 2, times 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 a sigma n comma n. So let's apply that here. And we want to know, what is the x to the n minus 1 coefficient of the characteristic polynomial, which is the determinant of this matrix? So you can think of the determinant as being some giant sum of products of matrix entries. You always have like one from each uh, row and column in the product. And OK, if you want to get a term that has an x to the n minus 1 in it, then in that product of the n things here, you have to have at least n minus 1 terms that have an x in them. But every term comes from its own row and column. So you need at least n minus 1 things on the diagonal. But then if you've already chosen n minus 1 things on the diagonal, there's a unique row and column that's left, which is the last diagonal entry. So one way to say this is the only permutation where this product contains at least n minus 1 terms with an x is the identity permutation. So what are we seeing? Is that the only way you could get something contributing to the x to the n minus 1 term is from this one permutation, sigma equals the identity. So the x to the n minus 1 coefficient of the characteristic polynomial is the x to the n minus 1 coefficient of this product x minus a11 times x minus a22 times 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 x minus a n n, the product of the diagonal entries. So what's the x to the n minus 1 coefficient here? Well, you have these n binomials. You have to pick n minus 1 of them to be x. And then the last one is going to be minus a i i. So what you get is minus a11, minus a22, minus, 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 minus a, n, n. And there's a nice way to describe this. This is the negative of the trace of this matrix A. It's the negative of the sum of the diagonal entries. So what are we seeing? We're seeing that the constant term of the characteristic polynomial, the constant coefficient, is minus 1 to the n times the determinants of the matrix. And the x to the n minus 1 coefficient is minus the sum of the diagonal entries, minus the trace. So 
I'll point out this is a really good argument to know. This came up on the fall 2020 algebra comprehensive exam as problem number five. All right, so I'm going to pause and erase, and I'll say a little bit more about uh, how to think about these coefficients of the characteristic polynomial because there's one other big thing that we know about the characteristic polynomial, and that is about the roots of this characteristic polynomial. Let's now recall that the roots of the characteristic polynomial are the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So this is important, and I want to emphasize this because Dummett and Foote don't say anything about it in the statement of exercise six of section 12.2, which I find very confusing. Let's suppose that the field F contains all the eigenvalues of A. Then what happens? Then the characteristic polynomial factors into a product of linear factors, x minus lambda 1 times x minus lambda 2 times times, times x minus lambda n, where these eigenvalues are elements of f. They're not necessarily distinct. There could be a lot of repetition, but they're all elements of f. So the constant coefficient of the characteristic polynomial, which we know is minus 1 to the n times the determinant of a, we can also compute by looking at the constant term of this polynomial, this product on the right-hand side, which is minus 1 to the n times the product of lambda 1 up through lambda n. And the x to the n minus 1 coefficient, which we saw was minus the sum of the diagonal entries of A minus the trace of A, is minus the sum of lambda 1 plus 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 lambda n. So what are we seeing? We're seeing that the determinant of A is the product of its eigenvalues, lambda 1 times lambda 2 times 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 lambda n. You have to remember that it's the product with multiplicity. And the trace of A is the sum of its eigenvalues, again, with multiplicity. So I just want to note that the minus ones that are floating around here cancel out, um, making this statement true. So one question is, what if F does not contain all the eigenvalues of A? which is something that definitely happens. So here's an example. Here's a two by two matrix over R. A equals zero, one, minus one, minus one. What is this matrix? It's the companion matrix of the polynomial X squared plus X plus one. That's certainly a polynomial in R bracket X, right? But this polynomial doesn't have any roots in R. It's irreducible in R, but it has two roots in C. So what happens if you think of this matrix as a matrix with entries in C is, OK, now you're back here, where you have these two roots. And it's just true that the product is the determinant of this matrix, the product of these two complex number roots. And the sum of these two complex roots is the trace of A is minus 1. But uh, in order to really make this statement work, I think you want to emphasize that you should be in the situation where F contains all the eigenvalues of A. Otherwise, what are the eigenvalues of this two by two matrix over R? It doesn't have any eigenvalues that are in R, but it has eigenvalues that are in C, which is an extension of the field R. So this kind of issue is going to be important when we talk about Jordan canonical form next week, and also when we begin our discussion of field extensions in chapter 13 coming up the week after that.